You hear that little fucking, you hear that little ding dong, ding dong. That Paco Bell shit. You know what that means? It means it's time for some healing. It's time to help you guys out. It's time to get helpful and heal cats. You got problems with your girl? I got you. Problems with your guys? I got you. Problems at your job? I'll fucking help you out. All you got to do is pick up the phone, dial 888-742-3345, 888-742-3345. Maybe your family's getting on your nerves. Sister fucked your man or some shit like that. Owes you money. You got a family member that owes you some cash or something. Don't give them money. That's boom. Solve that problem. All you got to do is pick up the phone, dial 888-742-3345. I coach lives. I'm here to life coach you. I'll life coach the shit out of you, son. If your life was a basketball team, I would chuck daily your life. I'm not going to fill Jackson your life because what? It, let's let's be real. He won some championships with fucking the best players ever. That's psh, I'm going to fucking I'm going to build a team. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to Chuck Daly that shit. I'm going to beat Bird. I'm going to beat Jordan. I'm going to beat Magic. And you're going to get the fucking chip. What's your life? Dial 888-742-3345. 888-742-3345. It's What Would You Do? It's coming up next. It's like a ray of light. Beaming down knowledge from the heavens above. What would you do? Need advice? Call us up right now. 888 Shade 45. What would you do? Shade 45. 888 You got a problem? Call me up right now. What would you do? Let's go to Ashley in Oklahoma City. Ashley. Hey, so um, I got a problem. All right. I've got a five year old son. Just got him on a T ball team. Mm-hmm. I've been married 13 years. And this coach is totally flirting with me all the time and trying to let him down easily. I don't want him to hate my child for me being shady towards him. So what, what's your advice? You being shady towards him. No, you don't fucking, you, I need you to be assertive with him. I am. I am. But I just feel like he's, he's starting to treat my son a little different because he might look and here's the worst case scenario. You got to go switch teams. Right, right. And then if that's the case, be like, yo, dude, the coach keeps hitting on me. Well, yeah, I don't, but I don't want my husband to know. Like, that would break his heart. And Why? Does he, is know, he cool been, with the coach? Married. No, they're, they're not friends or nothing. Like, we, we just met this guy a few months ago. Why would ago. it break his heart? Why, do, why would it break your husband's heart? It would. He would probably beat his ass, actually. And I don't yeah, want I mean, that to happen. That, I mean, like, like, look, yeah. And that's, and that's kind of, be like, look, man. Yeah, just be straightforward. Be like, yo. Get the fuck away from me. I yeah. I got I I have. nothing to do with you. Or you can okay. even, uh, y- you know, maybe perhaps uh, have your husband take him every other time or something like that. Yeah, no, that would be bad. <laughs> My husband would kill him. But well, he he doesn't yeah, need I'm, to know. like I'm if you're like... if you're worried about your husband doing something that's going to put the family in danger, then he doesn't need yeah. to know about that shit. Exactly, like he, that's what sounds... I'm not. I don't want him to know. So I'm just yeah, trying to play it he cool. Can, he and... can still he can still take the kid to T-ball without him needing to know about you turning exactly. down his advances. Is what I'm saying. Right, right, and he he has no idea. He, I mean, I that's fine then. Definitely. Look, I I get it, man. Like if you if you're worried about the if you're worried about your husband putting the family in jeopardy over this guy's flirting, then it, keep your fucking mouth shut. Like you like it sounds yeah, like you sure. sounds like you're doing the right thing. And sometimes life isn't fair, and sometimes your kid's gonna get treated like shit, and this might be one of those times. Yeah, it's, it's fucking. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah, it sure. sucks. Um, uh, and if your kids. You know, look for another look for another squad to play with. You know, yeah, or, for sure. Look, man, sometimes shitty experiences you learn. Yeah, yeah. It just sucks because it's a great team. Like, it, we, you know, we win every game. He's a good coach. He just he can't take no as an answer, and he's being shady just because I'm, you know, not telling you know, not letting him in, not letting him talk to me the way he wants to. Yeah, I understand that. You could even. Uh, I, yeah. What what have you told him? 
what what have, what have you what what did you say to him? Well, exactly? at first he told me he didn't know I was married, which is bullshit because he's on my Facebook. He knows I'm married. He sees the pictures. So whenever I told him you need to stop texting me, he said, "Oh, I didn't know you were married." Yes, you did. Like you knew the whole time I was married. So okay, just, so you uh, so you told him to stop texting. All right, and then you, yes, and then he and split. now it's been strictly it's been strictly t ball stuff. But all right. So every once in a while he put in that little, you know, little saying that he shouldn't like what make me feel a little uncomfortable like uh you look hot today at the game uh you, you know. know what to be honest with you like there's a head of screenshot that shit and fucking be like look man if you like your coaching job well i'd suggest you keep playing my fucking kid and you stop talking right? like that <laughs> yeah because, hold, hold because, that shit over his head right yeah, like you got leverage on this motherfucker. He's you got a paper trail. For sure, for like sure. Like you get him, you can get him fired. Yeah, I know. You, I just, oh, I'd hate that, so, but yeah, for sure. Fuck I, him. Yeah. Well, yep, yo, exactly. Like you got more power right. than you think you have. All right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not like well, fucking Mister. I'm not like I'm. Look, I'm not. I'm not the one that's like, hey, go tell. But I'm just saying, like, yo, dude, you got way more leverage than you think you have. And if, 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 yeah, if, but if, I, the thing is, I you, don't want to tell because my husband's very physical and he's very jealous already. I understand, but like, if you need to go nuclear war, you can't go nuclear war. Just know that. For sure. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, thanks, dude. I love your show. I listen every thanks. day. And appreciate I got both it. your books. Thank you. So I appreciate thank it. You. Well, thank you. And you be well. All right. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, Brady in Cape Girard. Yo, what up, man? You can hear me? Yeah, go ahead, bro. Uh, so I got uh, got arrested, man, and I got, they slapped me with nine charges. And I'm just, like, really tripping that, uh, like, my job's going to find out about it. Like, I just got a, you could say, like, my first, like, career job, you know? And it's, like, a Catholic hospital, so, like, if, if I end up, like, having to do jail time or, like, probation... Well, I'll lawyer the fuck up, dude. Just lawyer the fuck up. And... <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's what I did. I mean, my lawyer told me, he's like, oh, we can get a drop to, like, two charges. But I know after he talks, like, to the prosecuting attorney and everything, it's going to end up being more. And, like, I mean, well, I got, like, resisting arrest, like, obstructing. What the fuck is wrong? Officer, like, all right, look. All right, so, lo- okay, so you lawyer up, uh, plea down, and don't don't bring it up to your fucking... I think once they run a background, if, once you're hired, they stop running background checks, don't they? Uh, yeah. So shut the fuck up about it and lawyer up, do the best you can, shut the fuck up, keep your fucking head down. I don't know what else to tell you, and I hope you learned your lesson. Yeah, for sure. Like, you're you're a big boy now. You got a big boy job. Like, you can't be resisting arrest. And if you have drugs, keep them in the fucking trunk. <laughs> and don't, and dr- right, and don't drive drunk. Up. Uber. All right? Put you over. I, I just fucking like that ain't shit you could do. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Chucky in Wyoming. Yo, what up, dude? Chilling, man. What's your problem? Uh, so my girl, she constantly assumes shit, then assumes that I'm cheating on her all the fucking time, and I don't know what to do about it anymore, bro. How long? Well, your girl's a fucking maniac. Either she's super insecure or she's cheating herself. So. I mean, it's, I can't blame her for being insecure because I have cheated on the past, but well, shit there you should go. be left in the past. You know what I mean? Shit, shit should be left in the past, and I just don't know what to do about it anymore. Why don't you and your girl go to therapy about it? Clearly, she's not over it, and she, and and it takes a it takes a while to build the trust back. So you got to be patient with her. It's not yeah. like you're fucking Mister Innocent Man. You, she caught you cheating, so. This is no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't, I'm not saying I'm innocent by any means, but be patient. I mean, and it's it, been fucking, it's been years now. I get it. So clearly y'all need to go talk to somebody to help her process this shit. Yeah. And you haven't cheated since. Nah. All right. There you go. That's your congratulations, bro. Like, that's good. There you go. Just, but like you need there. Y'all too need therapy. There ain't shit else you like she she clearly hasn't processed this. She's clearly still mad. She's clear like she clearly doesn't trust you. Yeah, exactly. So go do some shit to help rebuild the trust. Let's okay. go to Omar in Bradenton. Omar. Hold up, Omar. 
my brother got uh, his, uh, his gun from his plug, and he en- ends up giving it to me. So then my he ends up telling my cousin that he gave me the gun, so my cousin comes finding me uh, sometime later to ask to borrow it to, and to scare somebody off. I'm like, well, if you're not going to use that, it's fine with me. So I give it him, thinking I can trust him, but then my brother comes in a couple of days later asking for the gun back, and I'm like, well, I gave it to I gave him to our cousin, and he gets all mad at me because he's like, oh, he's crazy. Why'd you give him? I'm like, why'd you tell him I had the gun in the first place? So now my cousin, I want to pick up his phone calls, and he, he told his brother that I got the gun back, in which I don't have the gun, and now my brother's mad at me, and my cousin doesn't pick up the phone. So I don't, I don't know what to do about that. You need to go get him a new gun. Or, or you need to go <laughs> get that it gun. It was a gift, though. I, I mean, it was a gift, though. I mean, I don't, I don't know why I got to repay a gift back. You don't know because it wasn't you gave you lost something of somebody else's. Doesn't matter how they acquired it. No, it I mean my it. brother gave me the gun. Like oh he, he gave oh gun. he gave it to you as a gift. Yeah, and then I, man, so I, that's the thing. He, oh. he wants to take the gift back to sell it, but he was gonna give me something else. I'm like, but you can't. I don't know why. Well, look married. then then be like, look man, I I loaned it to the fucking lunatic. Sorry. Oh, I thought I thought he loaned you the gun and then you loaned it out. Okay, I totally misunderstood that. Look, uh, it, oh, it no. sounds like everybody in the family made a bad decision. You guys are all really bad at decisions. Your brother made a bad decision by giving you the fucking gun, and then you gave it to your fucking lunatic ass cousin, and now he won't give it fucking I back. That was crazy. So there it is. Like it looks ain't to me. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know. So. I mean, look. Um, I would stay away from loaning people pistols just just moving forward i think i think this is a lesson to be learned you know like yeah yeah uh because best case scenario get it back worst case scenario you'll get it back dirty you know what i mean like no, no, yeah i know uh we we all think he sold it because uh apparently he's in a, some other shit i'm like oh, well that makes me feel even better so i'll go beat his ass or some shit i don't know you know yeah. is he like a dope fiend or something yeah, but he's like a fucking 350-pound dope fiend. So oh, he's one of those. Like, what gun? Yeah, he's one of those. <laughs> what gun? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You mean my gun? Like, look, that's, yeah, it's a wrap. Well, look, you learned All a lesson. Right. You learned a lesson with a gift, one. and I think your brother did too. Um, so there you go. All right, let's go to, let's go to Nelly in Boston. Yo, Nelly. what up? What's happening, man? Hey, man, so... Here's the scenario. Well, first, is this a scumbag move? Here's the scenario, man. I've been with this chick, uh, my wife, for 10 years. Uh, She was motivated at the beginning. She was going to school. She was trying to be a nurse and all that shit. Everything was gravy. Popped out a few kids. She's still going to school 10 years later. And, you know, I just became a fed like three years ago. And she ain't helping with shit. Don't want to do shit. Talking about, yeah. I'm going to school, but she's changing her majors left and right. I'm tired of it. I need some help, you know, with the right. bills and all that. I want to so, know, is it... Go ahead, keep going. If I bounce, is that a dirtbag move? I mean, it might be more expensive for you to bounce in the long run, the way the the way the way laws are set up. So, perhaps downsizing. <laughs> Damn, I, man. I mean... I mean, it sounds to me like you just fucking... It's bad luck. Look, she wants to be a mom. Uh, but she ain't expressed that to me. She wants to be a full time mom. That's it sounds like it. It sounds like she wants. Like, her, what is her action showing you? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. She doesn't have a fucking career. So there you go. It's like so you might have to downsize, and that way you're that way you can handle the fucking bills. And congratulations, you got a housewife. <laughs> All right, man. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, I mean, look, and, and and you got a couple kids with her, and you've been with her that long. It's going to be cheaper to keep her. Yeah, even if I'm unhappy. I mean, damn, we don't even sleep in the same bed together. I'm so salted about her not paying that you, goddamn bill. You might be less salty if you fucking, if you don't feel as stretched. So you just kind of downsize. And, yo, look, go get some pussy on the fucking side. I don't know what to tell you. Or fucking dumper. Like, you got options here. But I, I, I think right now you resent her. And she probably resents you. And maybe you guys need to talk about that, you know? I'll be like, hey, look, man. It looks like you clearly want to be a housewife. 
And there's nothing wrong yeah. with that shit. Like there's that's fucking there's nothing wrong with wanting to do that. But like if that is the case, we're gonna have to redo some things around the fucking house. But Jude, she's still going to fucking school. We still gotta pay for that shit. That's what I'm saying. Like you're gonna have to stop that shit. Like you got you're fucking hemorrhaging money. Yeah. Like look, babe, we are hemorrhaging money. You've been we've dumped this much into this. It doesn't seem like you want to do it. You keep switching majors. I can't afford this. We can't afford this. And go from there. Is it really a we, though? Let me ask you. Is it really a we if she ain't paying for shit? Nelly, but the thing is, to get her on board with you, you got to say we. Because she's your teammate. I got you. You dig what I'm saying? She's your teammate, bro. So, like, yeah, it is we. All sorry, right, All right, sorry hey, that, so, look, so, look is that. is she a better mom than she is a student? Are uh, you damn right? Yeah. All right, then there you go. At least at least she's a good mom to the fucking kids. Um, and stop looking at it like that. Look, just be like, look, man, I'm not I'm not gonna pay for school anymore. You don't don't lead with that, but end with it if it has to be. Be like, look, I'm not paying for school anymore. So like, let's just. Why I think it I think it would. I think it would be better if you just take care of the kids and then you can go go finish school once they get big big enough. That way that way the door's not closed on her her idea of a career and you guys can stay together and you'll stop resenting her. And then she, you know, she can focus she can focus on having the kid. Like it sounds like she that's what she wants to do. At least that's what it sounds seems like with her actions. Yeah. All right then. Cool, man. I appreciate that, man. Have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. Just watch what she does and uh and don't let this resentment build cuz that's that's going to that's going to eat you up inside. Let's go to Bunchy in Chicago. Bunchy. Yeah. Yeah. What up? What's happening? Man, just real quick. I ain't finna hold you up. I know, you know, whatever. But check I really like got to do I'm trying to, you know, do Got caught cheating on her for three years, you know, mm. making all these fucking promises. But I've been driving at her heart, you know, whatever. Broke up with my baby mama, and I'm like, this dude's still, like, you know, throwing lines on some other shit. But at the same token, I've been, I don't want a monkey bar, you know, like, like I'm getting out of some, like, chicks that I'm talking to. I'm not finna just, like, should I just shut shit down? The chicks that I'm talking to or just like, you know, this is somebody I really want to be with. But at the same token, like this nigga playing, this nigga playing get back. I mean, shoot your shot. I, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't throw salt in his game. I'd shoot my fucking shot, see if she's into me or not, and then go, go from there. You oh, know? she's into me. That's, All right. I ain't even, that's, a, that's, that's a done deal. What? The, I mean, that's, that's, that's. So you, then, you it, then that shit. so so you guys are fucking around. So then, then, then your next yeah. move is like, look, man, like I don't want you talking to him no more. Like, you, if you gonna fuck with me, fuck with me. If you gonna fuck with him, fuck with him. Yeah, yeah. But Draw a line I'm in the sand. Like diving on some other chicks. Like you know, I'm trying to, but now I have to tell this one chick that I don't want to fuck her no more. Well, that's so easy. Just call her up and tell her if you really like this girl. Have have the talk with her first, and then you cut off the other, cut off the girl second. See how the talk goes, because she might tell you to fuck off. You never know. I wouldn't give a fuck. Then all right, there you go. Have the talk with her. Fucking be like, look, man, if you're gonna fuck with me, you you can't like you're gonna have to block this motherfucker's number and stop talking to him. I can't have him sniffing around. Yeah, because the dude's still lingering. Like, you know, this shit should have been over, you know. But I know, so you got to check her. the lottery twice. You got to check All her. All right, yeah. Check her. And if, if you want, All you right, can check him too. too. But, like, it's, 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 not, it's not about, you don't need to trust him. You need to trust her. You dig what I'm saying? I figured, I figured, David. All right, bro, good luck. Hope, uh, and, yeah. yo, hopefully you guys are on the same page and she follows your lead. Like, I don't think this is a, the most ridiculous thing for you to ask is for her to, to if you guys are going to move forward, for her to sever ties with the past. Like, I don't think that's the craziest shit to ask. JC. Not really that rough. JC, what's up? The situation I got is I've been, I've been in, my, in my job for about three years now. I'm graduating uh, right now at the end of the month with my bachelor's. 
And, you know, I got a career type job. But the problem is, man, it's, it's like I don't, I'm not really like happy there. I work at a, at a kid's hospital, so it's kind of rough, you know, like with all the shit you deal Seeing with sick there. Sick kids and shit, yeah. All right. Yeah, man. And like, you know, today I found out that a kid that I've known for over a year just passed. All right. So, so okay. That's depressing as fuck. What do you do? Yeah. Uh, I work there as a coordinator for family resources. All right. So, look, uh, so you got to start looking for another job. Yeah. You know, I, my boss keeps, my boss is kind of like my mentor and he keeps telling me, Hey man, don't worry. I got things in the works. We're going to put you in the administration and this and that, but it's kind of, it's kind of starting to weigh on my personal life. And, you know, like I find myself like lashing out at my girl and my girl's like an awesome girl. I've been with her six years. Look, she bro, you need a therapist. Shit. You need a therapist, bro. Like you, I'm like you over here laughing, man. You're dealing with fucking, you got to look at fucking sick kids and dead kids every day, man. That That is a, uh, that's like, that's like fucking, that, that'll hurt your soul if you don't talk to anybody about it, man. Yeah. I mean, and, and though, you know, it's kind of tough to leave a bird in the hand for two in the bush. And that's the issue I'm in right now. Well, that's, I'm not telling you to lo- leave your job. I'm telling you to look for another job. And I'm also, I'm telling you to fuck actively start looking for another job and talk to your fucking talk to your supervisor and get a clear time frame and be like yo dude uh i i i love what i appreciate you your mentorship and all of that but like i can't keep seeing kids die it's it's really wearing on me yeah it is tough and you know i guess uh, that's that's probably the play it's yeah in the and, hospital administration so it's like even yeah. more of a stuck situation well yeah i mean yeah I, <laughs> kind of like a like like a, like a shit soup you feel me yeah i feel you so maybe like maybe it's time to fucking pivot yeah just the pivots usually result in less money so sometimes less true. money is more happiness that's true that's true that's what my girl tells me so yeah and uh, you know, quit taking it out on your girl i know it's hard I, I know it's hard not to take you know take frustrations out on people that are close to you but man yeah man and she don't deserve it i mean no she doesn't she's, she doesn't deserve she's a bomb. it yeah, so but, fucking uh, Yo, stop. I appreciate, I appreciate uh, your advice, man. All right, Have man, keep your head up, dog, and your your feelings are legit. You just need to you just need to process them in a better way, and communicate with I your boss you. and go Thanks, go. Sp- Much appreciated, man. My man. All right, man. Peace. All right, that was all with you do. You are checking out. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. Ladies and gentlemen. Fighting out of the blue corner, raised in the Garden State, the corniest man in hip hop, John the Chin Matthews. Tonight in the red corner, hailing from pop culture known to anyone paying attention, it's the mighty slang. Welcome to Slang versus John. Slang versus John. We got we we give John a word. You gotta say what the fuck it means. Prove that you are not the corniest man in hip hop. These aren't fair, but okay. These are the most fu- <laughs> these aren't these, fair. These are some of the most fucking com- common and old words ever. Go ahead. Let's see. Let's see what you got today. Oh, I know this one. Read it out loud, John. Ghetto bird. A ghetto bird. A ghetto bird. What is that, John? That is a police helicopter. Use it in a sentence. Okay. Uh, I'm out here in Venice, and look, there's a ghetto bird. Well, not Venice anymore, but back when I was there. A lot of ghetto birds. Oh, yeah. Outside the window, they'd flash the light in the in the apartment. Spooky. Like, oh, something's happening. Trying to find that pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't hit that so hard. <laughs> Congratulations, John. You got it right. You didn't fuck that one up. You want to go for two in a row? You want to go for two in a row, or you want to duck out now? Now we go for two. All right, there it is. Okay. Read it out loud, John. Damn it. Um, catch a fade. So, a catch a fade. Um, so I I doubt very much it has to do with the haircut. Uh, but if I had to guess, maybe I think I've heard you use this. I think I've heard you use this. So Jude uh, went uh, home and he caught a fade. What does that mean, John? You just are saying, you're just saying like, that, that, you're just saying verbs. Like you just, 
You just saying verbs, John. So if I had to guess, that means that you're getting wasted. So you're you're, you're catching a fade, catching a fade. You you caught a fade All right, over the well, weekend. Then use it properly, please, in a sentence. All right. I'm uh, planning on going uh, to the club t- and uh, and damn it, um, no. So I'm 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 hoping to go out uh, with uh, with a, a hooker and catch a fade. It doesn't have to be a hooker. I'm, I'm hoping to find a friend and catch a fit. <laughs> what? I was wrong. I actually thought I had that one. Nah, bro. Like, if you want somebody to catch a fit, you want to fight them. You want to knock them out. You want to beat them up. Catch a fit, get faded. <laughs> like, get fucked up. It's wow. kind of, you were kind of like, I, I don't know the exact terminology. Like, I don't know, like, where it exactly came from. But if you get faded, you get fucked up. So you, you want to catch a fit. Fuck them up. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I don't want to catch a fade. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't want to go out with a hooker and catch a fade? No, John. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. <laughs> that hooker beat me up. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about their, her pimp, but you just went straight to the woman. Catch a fade. There you go. You're learning. Same word, John. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. And now, it's time for News from the Chin with John C. Matthews. Of course, when you go online, you can find a number of remedies for your vagina. They're asking hey. you to put things in your vagina, but don't, you really should do that. Wait, what, what do you come oh, when sorry. you go online? You can find well, remedies just, for your vagina. Well, like for what? Well, when they're talking about, hey, put lemon juice in your vagina. Use some yogurt. How about some garlic, cucumbers? Heard, like yeah, that kind of shit. Like honey or some shit on the bee sting. Like that type of deal. You should not do that. And the New York Times recently ran uh, an article, and they spoke to this gynecologist, and just um, says that all these things can be easily paid for dismissed. by the pharmaceutical companies. There had to have been some natural shit before pharmacies came about, John. What were they doing for pussies fucking 300 years ago? I don't think they were putting yogurt in their vaginas. People weren't that crazy, I hope. Yo, you know, I was looking at, man, fucking when I was when I was laid up with the shit, uh, all my conspiracy things. Like, you know what they would use in their pussies for birth control in Egypt? What? Like, a mixture with... Uh, crocodile shit in it. Ugh. See, you yeah. shouldn't do that. I don't know how well it worked, <laughs> but they was doing it for like five. You know, they was like they was running shit for like five hundred years or some shit like that, maybe longer. I don't know. All right, so what what should you uh, keep away from your vagina? Well, there are some ideas out there that. Um, Lemon juice is recommended. By the way, this is all crap. But lemon juice, lemon is, juice? is recommended Ooh. to acidify the vagina. Don't do that. What does that do? What does acidifying it do? What's the purpose of it? Well, I'd have to go on to this website to find out what these idiots are talking about. But I guess the idea is to, you know, adjust your pH level in your vagina. But you, but you shouldn't do that. Why Throw would you some really lemon do juice that? on that shit, <laughs> like calamari. <Ugh>. <laughs> 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 and yeah, hell no alright what else yogurt this is thought uh, that the bacteria could help repopulate the healthy vaginal bacteria don't do that sea sponges that Ever- sounds legit I'm no. like, so far I'm no. like alright one out of two so far I'm like yogurt sounds legit the lemon juice sounds a little crazy alright what's the sea sponges sea sponges are thought uh, that they can help uh, your menstrual hygiene no. Uh, what do you mean? I don't even know. What, like, well, sea, like those all natural shits that they got the like the lumpy sponges. That's, I mean, I would think that a sea sponge is just that. I mean, it's a creature, isn't it? Right. And then you just put it in your vagina while you're having. It's like a tampon. Right. I mean, this is not a good idea. Um, but people are out there doing this, which seems crazy. And. But specifically, uh, they're saying here that uh, I, I was talking to a hooker. She was. She said that she would do. Uh, she would put a sponge up on her, 
up in her shit during her period. Well, like a sink sponge? A kitchen sponge? Yeah, some type of sponge to mm-hmm. stop the blood so she could keep fucking. <laughs> what? what, what <laughs> okay. And why didn't she use a tampon, right? Well, because you can't fuck with a tampon in, John. Oh. I'll accept that. There you go. <laughs> what else? Uh, about, Is that it? Well, yeah. Uh, but they're just saying that uh, a good rule of thumb when you're out there online, uh, if you see words talking about therapy is uh, has been proven, that's usually a sign that's just bullshit. Uh, run if something is being sold. Um, also, just essentially any homeopathic product out there for your your vagina. Um, and also testimonials, stuff like that. I understand that, but there's got to be some natural shit that's good for your pussy. Like, there just has to be. I guess, but I mean, you've, even you've said it's a self-cleaning oven. I mean, you can just kind of leave it alone, right? I know, but like, some stuff happens. Like, I don't know. I know, I remember, I think it was Penny Royal. That, was, that used to induce... Um, you uh that that would make you have your period like if 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 you was late you could just drink a bunch of penny royal tea and do the oil the little droplets until you had your period see i haven't looked that up but i guarantee that's not right i I mean is that do you think that's real yeah i think it does some shit that makes you fucking makes your uterus start doing some shit start harlem shaking or some shit like (laughs) But none of you. I've known people. I've known people that tried it and it just worked. So yeah. People that you trust. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. Paradigm coming. They got some of that tea. By the way, Jude, you were right about this Egyptian contraceptive. Yeah. It says they mix co- crocodile dung, honey, and sodium carbonate. There you go. What's sodium carbonate? Is that just like some type of oil or salt? Let's look that up. Look at that. That will fucking... And honey. Yeah, it's they, a type of salt. They couldn't have been eating pussy, man. That's like eating shit. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to think that you'd have this uh, horrible infection from that. Putting feces in your vagina? And this is insane. Yeah, and yet, it didn't. they didn't. Like, that's the crazy shit. All right, what else? Okay, so this online blog bustle it's uh it's somewhat popular but they recently held a survey and they asked uh, 149 of their readers to talk about uh, things that uh, uh singles find frustrating can you think of what uh, the number one might be or single men or women uh or just any yeah just singles so. singles what they find frustrating i don't know dying alone or some shit like uh, it does look like uh, women ages 18 to 35. So Okay, all right. So women. Women. Uh, when people will be like, you're so pretty. How come you don't have a boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> or when are you going to get married? Yeah, that's uh, 9% weighed in saying uh, questions and judgment from family members and friends. That's the most frustrating. But again, that, that's 9%. So that's kind of down the list there. All right, what's the number one? All right, number one. 45% said that they uh, they were lonely. Loneliness is the most frustrating. That just sounds sad. <laughs> well, that's frustrating. It's kind of- yeah, that doesn't sound... <laughs> lonely. They weren't frustrated by their loneliness. They were saddened by their loneliness. That's that shit, man. Like, I don't know, dog. Like, the older I get, man, I'm just turning, like... I don't know. You know. It's cool to like get after a career and it's also cool to uh fucking settle down. You know? Like like find someone that you love and have a family with them. I think that's fucking dope too, you know. But I like living out here in LA, you see so many so many uh so many people, both men and women, that just don't do that. Like, I'm one of them, you know. Like, I don't necessarily know if the, the new way is fucking better. Look at them, 90% of them. 
<laughs> but what was the percentage? Uh, 45% of the people. That's a big ass chunk, man. There's lonely. Are, are, you, are, you, are you lonely? <laughs> you, you sit there and stare at the wall and say, oh, I'm so lonely. I no well no because then I do things that make me unlonely but like they're not always the most uh they're not always the best things for me so mm. I tend to be self destructive <laughs> to to battle the lons the lonesomeness but yeah man like shit I'm fucking forty like I should have had a girl by now like fucking oh if you wanted to turn that around you could yeah I'm sure I could but like you know what are you gonna do what are you what's what else lonesomeness okay so we already covered the judgment uh, 30 percent uh, of singles who aren't dating say societal pressures to be in a relationship it's uh very frustrating so people feel this pressure that they have to go out and find a partner i guess I mean, you could i don't yeah maybe <laughs> yeah i feel a lot of times they're projecting when when people say that shit they'll be like oh people they did it it's like, no, nah, you just feel fucked up because you don't got no motherfucking man, and not, now you're blaming other people. <laughs> I've got another category here. 30 36% of singles who are dating say not meeting quality people is the most frustrating thing about uh, their status. So they're looking, but uh, they're just finding losers. All the guys are shorter than they thought they were going to be. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's the main shit, man. That was the main complaint for women, that they were shorter and balder when I would talk to them, when I would do the little internet dating, little phone dating. And mine was, they were always fatter and not as cute as their pictures. It was so I'd be like, come on, man. Like, And you'd see it. You'd see, you're like looking at this plain Jane, like, fucking toad of a woman and then she'd just turn her head in a certain way for like a split second and then you'd be like that was the camera angle like that was the angle you was cute right there and yet for a she's... split fucking second you know what I mean and yet she's a toad yes <laughs> even little toads got the good side you know she just it's manipulative I don't like that shit well, have you been on a date when you were just horrified that uh, this, this lady showed up that was just a beast to you or something? Um, there was this uh, there was this chick. This was way back in the day. She was like, uh, her dad was like a jazz musician. She was big, big, thick black chick, and um, she was really aggressive. And I was just like, yo, man, like you got to calm down, you know, like. <laughs> like we're out to de like she was just aggressive on everything on the waiters on this like it was just like it was mad aggression all the fucking time and it got to the point where like i'm like let's turn this into a friendly night i was like and i got a text from my homegirl i was like oh my homegirl tina's in the area she wants to meet up and have a drink with us i'm like so she came by like i was trying to turn this into uh i was trying to turn turn this date into a just a hangout and when I went to the bathroom, she like, she rolled up on Tina. She was like, he's fucking mine. Stay away from him. <laughs> she was like, it's cool, man. We're just buds. <laughs> Don't you fuck with him. And then Tina, she told me about that the next day. She was like, what's up with your girl? She's a fucking lunatic. I was like, I know. I ain't never, I would never smash. That was the last time I hung out with her. Oh, you know the worst part of this? This is the real this is the real kicker. The reason how I end up pulling her is cause I like this shit happens to the best of us. I remember I hooked up with this girl that I was trying to holler at. I ain't smashed or nothing. And I went to like some Halloween shit and dropped fucking um paid all this money, dropped dropped ecstasy, started rolling, and then cruised was cruising around the club. Like it was me this girl and her whole crew and then um she was fucking just making out with some guido like just some like <laughs> she's just, just like she met some guido and he just swooped her from me like i guess i never had her you know what i mean like i if she got took that easy i never had her so i just was just like fuck son like now i'm i'm rolling my balls off i ain't got nowhere to go I'm stuck here, so I just end up like kicking it with them, and that's how I met the big, the 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 giant black chick. 
she seemed way she seemed way nicer when I was on ecstasy. <laughs> Fuck. All right, what else? Okay. Beer goggles. When guys get wasted, of course, they look at women and then think they're attractive, some that they normally wouldn't. But uh, this is a proven fact that when you're intoxicated, you find women hotter. But there's a, a, a thing that women can do to, to lessen this so they're not objectified. Oh. So. So what can they do so they're not objectified? What they can at do. At the bar at fucking 2.30 in the morning. So you can uh, demonstrate that you're uh, a human being. Um, you can uh, just sort of uh, Would project. You quit, getting, quit reading Huffington Post all the fucking time. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's not Huffington Post, man. <laughs> fucking pussy. No. Well, they're saying project if, if you, that you're a human being. Oh God. I'm Get not, out of here. Well, it's true, I and mean, that's what they're. I, I believe it. Hey, you you hu humanize right, yourself. I'm drunk. I'm gonna. Uh, that's just a fucking. That's a hole. That's a wet hole. Come here, hole. Well, they're saying humanizing attributes such as warmth and competence uh, than the guys that were in the study. They, they didn't have this uh, lecherous uh, tendency, it looks like. Warmth and competence. I don't even understand what that means. Uh, what does that mean? Well, warmth, uh, that you, you have feeling. I mean, I don't know how you do this in a bar, quite frankly, but you just sort of demonstrate that you've, you've got uh, heart and uh, you, you're intelligent, that kind of thing. All right, cool. Okay, what else? <laughs> What's another way to stop the fucking... <laughs> That's what that stop stop from drunk guys hitting on you in a public place. Well, I mean that's pretty much what they're just saying. Uh, no. You you should uh, seem kind and intelligent, and then the guys will back off. I you, you know what you may be right. This could be bullshit. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's just like it. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I got a sister. Like she just tell guys to fuck off. Like dude, no, no. And some some dudes would get butt hurt, and other guys wouldn't. When I used to fuck with that stripper, man, she, she, uh, she used to be able to play them dudes so good, man. Like, we never paid for her drinks ever. She just was just run fucking game on dudes all goddamn night. It was ridiculous. Looking back, I'm ashamed of myself. But back in the day, it was just like. <laughs> but wouldn't she attract this this flock of guys that she couldn't shake? Or she just would weave through the motherfucker. She just she just was, was mad manipulative, man. Like. I feel like there's such a, especially right now, like it's such a one-sided thing of the, oh, guy's aggressive, blah, blah, blah. But like no one ever talks about like how fucking manipulative uh, women are to to get things that they want. Like no one talks about that. Shoot, I used to watch her, man. She used to fucking run these dudes. Oh, what's up, honey? Da, da, da. Give me that. And then just fucking get it in ghost. And the dudes and the guys would be sitting there like looking, just <laughs> looking like someone stole their bike. Sick as fuck. And she'd be gone. <laughs> Did it all the fucking time, dude. But you personally, you can tell when someone's playing like that, right? You can sense it. Shut it yeah, down. whatever. And and like, look, when I buy someone a drink, I'm buying them a drink because I feel like buying them a drink. I don't need shit from like... Most most women I've bought drinks for over the over the years, I've never even got their number. I never even hollered at them. I just bought them a drink because I don't know. Yeah, you know, I felt like it. I've never done that. I mean, I I mean, just a stranger. You say, "Hey, let me get your drink." Is that what you do? Yeah, I <laughs> bought this gay dude his meal. What? I bought it last time. Yeah, me and my homeboy was arguing the whole fucking time, and it was just me, my homeboy, and then this, uh, this gay dude in the corner on the patio and I felt so bad that like he had to hear me and him arguing <laughs> that I just bought his meal for him. I was like, he didn't even know. I didn't even tell him. I'm like, Hey man, sorry about that, bro. Have a good, have a good night. And, uh, went in and bought him a fucking meal. And going out with you just sounds like a scene all the time. Fight, what are you talking about? Fights and debates and <laughs> having to cover dinners because it's so loud. I don't know. Yeah, me and my man. My buddy was mad that I didn't watch Jamie Oliver. I'm like, that guy's a fucking douchebag. What the fuck I want to hear from him for? <laughs> British twat. Go go fix your country, asshole. Suck my dick. All right, what else? Okay. Discovery. Uh, discovered that card. Uh, they have now put together a map which shows you the best tippers in the country and uh, which are the worst. The Discover card? Yeah, that... Um 
That uh, lending company, sure. Don't nobody use Discover Card. Does anyone use that shit? You know, I think I saw. I, I think I still, still see that symbol out there. Every so this is just based on people that own Discover Card. Who's the best tippers? Well, they're saying here uh, the survey of almost a thousand Americans. Uh, I mean, it's not that many. I can. I mean, I'm not somebody a statistician, but it seems to cover. You extrapolate. Okay, and it's and it's uh, and it's Discover Card. Mm-hmm. The worst tipping. Let's see. The worst were Arkansas, Nevada, and Montana. So. Arkansas, Nevada, Montana. Mm-hmm. Bad tipping. Generally, those who lived in New England, as well as uh, other uh, east, south, central regions, uh, they also uh, tipped well. Let's see. It looks like uh, Wyoming, Idaho, and Nebraska. To ensure promptness. That's what it means. Tip. Do you do you how how high do you tip? I I, I feel like you'd probably go overboard. I'm a good ass tipper because I used to work in the service industry, but I'm also I'll also fuck you over if I feel like you're just a piece of shit. <laughs> and I'm not like I I'm understanding. I'm not that asshole. that's like uh like I don't blame the waiter for kitchen mess ups or like I understand how a restaurant runs. So, but like if you're just like a shitty bad waiter. I'll I'll undertip you. Well, what's undertipping? How how low do you go? I don't know. I'll do like ten percent on the fucking. I'll do ten percent on the before tax. Because most people are tipping not the but they just look at the bottom tax everything and then just do. It when I waited tables, it was ten percent was uh. 10% tips and then it went up to 15%. Now it's at 20 fucking percent. It's like and now and then in California right now they they run in this game where it's like they roll the tips into the fucking they roll the tips into your bill. I hate that. So I'm forced to pay a fucking tip. Oh, I know. I saw that the other day at a bar. I couldn't I believe it. That. It was like 20% or something. It was in I was... it's, it's bullshit and, and it's like look man that's like some communism shit like and then they pool all of the fucking tips so like I was a good waiter like I was bad at my job but man I was a charming motherfucker so I used to get good tips people like me like that all it does is make it, all it, all that does is make the fucking worst person get paid as good as the best person and then it disincentivizes that the the best person and then it then the fucking everyone gets shitty service and then on top of that the fucking restaurants are are keeping that money because then they'll just they'll either uh they'll just pay these cats a flat hourly right now so it's a big scam it's fucking bullshit the worst was that one i forgot the name of it It was on it's on silver lake man some italian restaurant I, i wish i could remember his name so i could throw it under the fucking bus but uh Yo, they had the nerve to ask for a tip for the kitchen. I was like, the kitchen. I'm supposed to. You're the you're the manager. Figure out how to fucking manage your restaurant and pay the kitchen what they need to get paid. Like, fuck out of here. Tip for the kitchen. My sauce was too salty. Do I get? Are we taking money off? Like, fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I they got rid of it in Europe. People seem to like it better over there so they do point out here though if you do have a bad experience you should voice your concerns and just don't leave a bad tip because then the the, the waiters and waitresses will just think you're a jerk and they won't really know what, what went wrong i've done that before yo shit i got into it uh at the airport flying flying into when i was flying to houston this lady kept walking past me over and over and over again and you know it's like motherfuckers gotta catch her flight and i was like she didn't even give me a, a menu I had to go get a menu. I was like, excuse me? And she was like, look, there's other restaurants if you don't like it here. I was like, this bitch. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I know. So I got, I went and got a burrito and then came back and just started talking shit on her on my fucking Instagram live and shit. <laughs> like, yeah, this fat piece of shit with the fucking black roots, fucked up hair, <laughs> miserable. Whatever. Uh, 
Look, I my here's my whole stance on tipping. Like this is this is the, the agreement that we've made to go out. And you know, if you go out in America, this that's the way it's set up. Like you tip, you're supposed to tip, tip. Um, if you don't got money to tip, don't fucking go out. But uh, it's discretionary to me. Like it's up to me how much a motherfucker gets. And I don't just, hey, everybody gets 20% just because. Fuck that. They're pointing out here that uh, Uber and Lyft drivers, they are not being tipped well, despite both companies offering riders the option. Uh, it looks like drivers are only getting about 8% on average. Well, that was the whole point. Well, that was their whole fucking, that was the whole deal. That was the whole thing was like it was one price and you didn't have to worry about a fucking tip. That was what they were selling people. Yeah, Uber has trained me not to tip. I'm sort of a bad yeah. person. I, I should start doing that. Whatever, man. I fucking <laughs> I tipped this one foreign dude twenty dollars uh, the other night just because the shit he was saying was just so amazing. Just I've, I've never heard such candid talk from somebody because like no one told him how to be politically correct, and he was just saying the most fucking crazy shit. Just wild. He's like, you go to, you go to massage and they, they massage your penis here. I was like, yes, they, yes, they do. Yes, they do. You gave him 20 bucks for that. There was more that I, it was, uh, yeah, it was, there's more, but I don't even want, that's how politically incorrect he is. I'm not even going to say what the fuck he was saying on air. <laughs> That's how raw that dude got. I was like, damn, son. Okay, shit. Because they didn't give a fuck. And I was high, so I was in a good mood. I tip better when I'm high. All right, is that the news or you got good news? Got some good news for you. And now, time for good news. IKEA, they are trying to make the, the world a better place. And starting in 2020... IKEA, they will eliminate everything from single-use plastic plates, drink stirs, cups, tableware, straws, freezer bags, garbage bags, packaging. So they're trying to lessen their, their impact when it comes to litter. All right. That's cool. Yeah. I'm on. The, I'm like, it is what it is. You know, it's going to be what's going to be. But that's cool. Well, when you're out there in the world, do you find that you... Do you do you take the little single-use plastic bag anymore? Once in a while, maybe. What's a single-use plastic just, bag? If you're in the if you're in the quickie mart or something, and they've got those just a plastic bag. Yeah, and then I use it as a garbage bag, oh, so okay. I use it twice. So you're doing your part, I guess, oh. sort of. Yeah, like I. Th- that's the whole thing. Like people are like, I'm in California, I'm in LA, and they're so smug, and they pull out their little fucking. Their little grocery sack, and they're they're so pleased with themselves because they saved one tree in their fucking brain or some shit like that. And then like I'm like, give me the plastic bag, you know, like, and they look at me like, oh, you don't have a grocery sack. I'm like, suck my dick. But it's like I, I reuse it. And bitch, you just bought a gang of plastic bags that you bought more plastic than I did, and all your shit's wrapped in plastic. Everything's like. You th- oh, wow, you solved the problem. Got rid of those bags. Like, everything's fucking wrapped in plastic in that bitch. Yeah, you gotta start somewhere, I guess. Uh, Next. All of this shit are these empty gestures so people can feel better about themselves. I put that on my motherfucking mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fucking truth. Oh, I just solved the world. Oh, you gotta do something. This one chick I was fucking with, she started bagging the groceries. I'm like, yo, dude, like, let them do their job. She's so patronizing, man. Like, let a motherfucker, like, if you bagging the groceries, what the fuck is a bagger supposed to do? Sit there and watch? Like, you not showing me how what a nice person you are. It's fucking patronizing. Let, let a motherfucker do their job. I don't even know how I got down this goddamn road, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Try to brighten your day. Well, that was the good news? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> kind of misfire. Sorry. Congratulations, Ikea. And thanks for telling everybody about it. 
<laughs> Next. You know what would have been dope? If they just did that quietly. No. But Ikea needed a press release to tell you, to tell people how good they were. So even that gesture was just about, it's just marketing, bro. Yeah, they're trying to show you the, the golden path, how to behave. Follow our lead. Check us out, guys. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to save the environment, and there's a press release about it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Buy this press board fucking bullshit cabinet okay sweet awesome I keep anyway that's the news you are checking out the all out show with rude Jude on demand thanks to Chris on the boards Alex the producer John is a producer and Keenan is on the phones alright my name is Jude Angelini I'll talk to you tomorrow <laughs>